I'm very, very, very happy that today we are recording this podcast because, um, you know, when, um, when I started to work in India with my technology, yeah. uh, of course, I come from Italy. Yes. India is 20 times bigger, right? Yeah. And the number of dentists is uh, uncountable for, for me. True. Um, and of course, uh, my, my problem was uh, how do I let uh, the um, dental space in India know that there is a new way to approach implantology, right? Yeah. Uh, what is my elevator pitch? Uh, eventually, I didn't need one because uh, more and more doctors started to approach our technology as pioneers uh, and every single every single of them was happy uh, with uh, what um, they were doing okay uh, and then uh, every time i met uh, a new doctor that i didn't know before my question is always the same what brought you to the magnetic mallet how and why you said uh, okay this is something i want to try and uh, and then I want to adopt in my clinic. See, I was knowing about this technology about seven to year, eight years back, but I never had uh, an opportunity to you know to use it. You know, there are so many new technologies coming in the market, and then you know sometimes you get you just let go. Let's see what happens. But then uh, Mr. Amit Dhawan he came to my clinic, and then he explained me about the device, and uh, the first thing I thought was. Um, you know, it would be a very good device to do an implant on my mother's case. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I wanted a, a device where I don't want to any, put any kind of a drill. Mm -hmm. Because the available bone was very less. So 3mm of bone, so what, what are the possibilities, you know? I wanted something which, you know, if I, even in an implant or if you use a drill, you have a minimum drill of 2 mm, I suppose. So, it is going to, you put a drill and the bone is lost. Yeah. And that is where, you know, I uh, told him that, uh, let me do it on my mother's case. And I used it. That's a big responsibility. <laughs> yeah. That was a big responsibility. Yeah, and you use the magnetic mallet, it will just spread the bone, you know, uh, without any heating of the bone. So, I am sure about that there is not going to be any kind of bone loss later. So that is what, you know, brought me to Magnetic Mallet. When, uh, when was your wow moment uh, when uh, you started to use the mallet? Uh, what, what made you think, uh, okay, this is it. This is what uh, I wanted uh, because this is what I needed. The first case bought me, my mom's case, was the wow moment. Okay. Imagine, you know, with the very less bone, you just do the osteotomy, you place the implant and you get good stability. That was the wow movement. And that is when I thought that this is a device which I have to have uh, in my clinic. You know, the, the solution was there, right? Yeah. Uh, we're talking about uh, uh, we don't have enough bone. How about we just... Uh, expand and condense it instead of drilling out absolutely uh, but of course it's easy to say it's not easy to do unless you have uh, enough power and control and i believe that power and control uh, are two words that uh, define the mallet uh, do, do you agree with me i agree with you see if you see if you see uh since the beginning of implantology, there has always been a, st a, a, a possibility of, you know, uh, manipulating the bone in such a way that you don't heat it, you don't remove the bone. Instead of removing you, you know, displace it somewhere. So that is the, was always the concern. This is how the research have been started. So they started with, you know, copious irrigation, slow drilling protocols, osteodensification and things. But then you have a device like magnetic mallet, you know, you don't remove any bone for that matter. You don't heat the bone. You don't need irrigation. So when you don't need irrigation, you are not displacing the clot. Yeah. 
it's a very important thing for you know healing of uh, the implant sites it's a less invasive way to deal with exactly. so no, it's a boon for maxillary uh, preparations because you know now i the only time i need to see the bone is the first osteotome which i place okay th that is where i need a very clean site but the the subsequent uh, osteotomes which i use are without uh, removing the bleeding from the site yeah. because then i know that where am i going and i can if if my position is wrong i can you know i can you know adjust the position in the um, the way i want it the way you know yeah managing yeah managing yeah yeah well uh minimal invasive uh, uh very conservative uh, uh a lot of uh, one step surgeries because of course uh, it's a, it's a different way to work that is absolutely very uh, beneficial to the patients uh, how, how do you explain this to to your patients uh, when you When you know that that case is for the magnetic mallet, how do you introduce them to what you're doing? A different approach that in your clinic uh, is uh, is uh, See, implemented. I, I, I um, what I explain to the patient is we are going to use a, a technique where you know uh, we are not going to remove any of your bone, mm. and you are going to have very less post-operative morbidity. by the way low pain by the way no pain at all the only thing you may feel that there is there is a kind of you know uh, as you are magnetic magnetic you will get kind of some kind of vibrations in your in your skull that is the only thing i tell them that this is what is going to happen and rest is you know you're not going to have any kind of swelling no pain nothing and because we are doing it less traumatically i don't need to give a lot of medication as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know it's uh... now let's play let's play a game let, 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 let's assume i am a colleague of yours okay i'm a doctor i don't use the mallet i've heard about that uh, and i have a lot of reservations right okay and i'm just telling you the most common reservation i hear from doctors that uh, have never used the mallet yet right yeah. i like to see i like to hear your um what's your take on that for example uh, magnetic mallet uh, i believe it's very brutal way to work on bone it's a mallet it's a hammer oh now not at all you know give me a give me a solution where you can you know manipulate the bone you can make an osteotomy you don't need to displace the clot again and again to visualize the osteotomy you do it non traumatically but i still i still think it's very brutal to the patients because you're hammering the patient that's going to be very discomfortable for the patient it is i don't think so it is i have none of my patients have complained for the uh, the only thing is you need to explain them what is happening in there okay oh, that is what i do and this is there are going to be a small vibration moment you're going to feel that but nothing to worry about it what i am doing okay. is doing it non traumatically and i make them sure that there is not going to be any kind of swelling any kind of pain Yeah, I can guarantee about it. You know, let me do that with any other uh, procedure. Let me make it more difficult for you. Uh, I'm very concerned about uh, over condensing the bone, which means over compression when I place my implant. How do you deal with that? Uh, no, uh, there is no uh, absolutely means. Uh, this is uh, the magnetic mallet is nothing but a a, a, a mechanized mallet. You know, mm -hmm. so. it will expand the bone it will not condense the bone and that's the that's the answer i like to it yeah and because you know why yeah. because uh, uh, that's very common right okay, i'm using an osteotome uh, i'm condensing 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 that might happen uh, if you use uh, or if if you're just using a reverse drilling okay that is condensing condensing uh, the magnetic mallet displaces the bone or expands it so moves the bone from the from where it is to a different place 
And as you do it, of course, there is also a little bit of condensing, but that depends on the um, uh, what type of bone you're working. Yes. If you're working a D4, you definitely want a condensing. Uh, but if you're using the Magneti mallet on a D3 or even D2, the, the, the expanding, displacing effect uh, is much higher. And, right? and, and that, that's the magic on, the, on the, what we do. That expansion, you're sure that you are not heating the bone. By the way, wow, we're just while, bypassing the heating thing. While any kind of reverse drilling, I'm not sure whether that irrigant is reaching at the heated, so you're not sure whether it gets heated or not. One thing. Second thing is, I have done osteodensifications also. What happens is you don't see any bleeding from the osteotome. Mm -hmm. But when you do magnetic mallet, the bleeding is the same. So I'm sure, because bleeding is, again, very important factor in, in the healing of implants. Okay, now I have another reservation. Uh, you know, I've been doing extraction for 30 years. Uh, my extraction is just fine. Why, why, why do I need uh, this, this tool uh, to, again, to make them again, better? Again, what magnetic mallet is going to do is it is going to expand the bone. So what is going to, uh, wherever you have to remove it, it will just wedge in between the tooth. The tooth comes within seconds. Better than if I do that manually? Oh, manually will take time. You know, you have to mm -hmm. slowly go remove bone in between the bone. It, it takes time. Magnetic manages within seconds you remove a bone, uh, the tooth. Yeah. Uh, and with that, when I do magnetic uh, re removal of extraction with the magnetic manager, I always use it interdentally. So, you know, there is no bone loss. The buckle plate remains intact. No bone loss. And the removal is very fast. I'm always amazed how the extractions, the 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 uh, first time users, okay, the moment makes an extraction, that is the moment where it's the uh, you know uh, okay, I, I get it, right? Um, probably because it's just what you said. Yes, you can do extraction in different ways with a different level of experience, but when you do it with the magnetic mallet, it's like okay, this is not the world. Okay, I'm not going back to anything. Now, another question for you. Um, we currently have, uh, I think the pipeline is about uh, 600 dentists uh, in, the, in, the, in the wait list uh, in India to try out the magnetic mallet. Uh, what is the very suggestion you want to give to, to them? Uh, well, how, what, what, do you suggest, what type of case you would suggest them to pick? for the tryout of the magnetic mallet? I would suggest them to use it on any of the maxillary or any kind of extraction. And then you will be amazed with the kind of results you're going to get. You just use it on any maxillary case or any kind of extraction and you will be very happy with the with the procedure, uh, with the equipment as, as well, such. Sure. So 600 times, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rupendra. Oh, thank you so much. It was a great pleasure to be here.